When I was a boy, my father had a tradition of reading the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2 every year on Christmas Eve. It was a tradition that he loved very much, and frankly, so did I. Uh, when my children came along, I decided to do it just a little different because eh, that's the way I am. And every year I'd tell the Christmas story instead of reading it, and every year I'd tell it just a little bit different than I did previously. I'm going to give you, uh, as best as I can recall, since I never wrote down a script, the version that I think my children liked the best. And it goes like this. And the time came when Caesar Augustus issued a decree that all the world should be counted in a census and taxed. Now Joseph and his intended, his fiance Mary, lived down in Judea, but he was from Galilee. Now that's about a hundred miles, and in those days that would take, eh, for a, a married couple, about ten days, but you see Mary was probably about nine months pregnant. I think it took a little bit longer to get there. When they got to, to uh, Bethlehem, the hometown of King David, because Joseph was descended from King David. They couldn't find any place to stay, so they stayed in a barn. And sure enough, Mary went into labor and gave birth to a baby boy, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a hay manger. Now at that time, there were shepherds out in the fields. And an angel appeared to them and said, don't be afraid. <laughs> yeah, right. What <coughs> a big angel shining gloriously. Don't be afraid, right. Okay, anyway. And the angel says, I bring to you glad tidings of great joy to all of mankind. For unto you is born this day in the city of the king a savior. And here's a sign you will find him in the manger of a barn. And all of a sudden, the whole sky was filled with brightly shining angels, and they were singing, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. Oh, my goodness, what a song. Well, when they disappeared, <laughs> wow. And the shepherds looked at each other, and they said, we got to go check this out. They were so excited, they didn't even leave anybody on guard. They jumped on their Harleys, and they took off. And they raced down into Bethlehem. They got into town, and everyone's yelling at them to slow down. Those bikes are too loud. You guys are too ugly. <laughs> and they got the, and they split up. And they found that baby, and they... they uh, started signaling each other and they all gathered together and they just marveled and here it is just as the angels said and they told Mary and Joseph their story and it's, it's like wow can you imagine Mary and Joseph what would they think these guys have had too much to drink I don't think so and then not right away, but sometime later, along come three great, big, long stretch limos. And they got a dozen Humvees riding escort. And out of those three stretch limos come three very wealthy, wise, scholarly men from the East. And they came seeking the king that was born under the star. And they brought gifts of gold and frankincense and that also precious perfume myrrh that could be used for medicines. And they left these gifts with this newborn king. And I always wondered, what did Mary and Joseph think about 